Hi there and welcome to my Cloud Chamber video series. So in this video I want to show you my very own DIY Cloud Chamber that I built and just talk about uh, how it works a bit, some historical context, uh, what you can do with it, how I built it, stuff like that. So basically the Cloud Chamber is a particle detector that lets you see charged particles of ionizing radiation which is mostly alpha particles which uh, consist of two protons and two neutrons it's basically a helium and nuclei or beta particles which are just electrons but also if you're lucky you could see like stuff like positrons or muons or stuff like that it will not let you see um, gamma rays for example because they don't have an electrical charge the principle how it works is um, you create a kind of like a mist or a fog of super saturated alcohol and the surface area of the chamber has to be really cold like around minus 30 degrees Celsius you have to get to at least minus 26 27 otherwise it won't work and it kind of like uh, it creates uh, tiny like contrails, like tiny clouds where those particles pass through which makes you see them. Well, let's take a closer look. Um, basically this here is the vessel, in here is where all the action happens. Down here on this plate, this is the cooling uh, surface. Below here I have like some Peltier coolers that I strapped together on a 12 volt power supply. And of course there's a radiator and a fan to get rid of all the heat that the Peltier elements uh, create. This surface here will get to minus 30 degrees. You want to have one of these to check for your temperature, like infrared thermometer that you can check from a distance if you really get cold enough. Because it really won't work if you don't get at minus 26 or so at least. Then I have like this rubber ring just to seal it off a little bit. I, I kind of figured out it doesn't have to be 100% airtight, but it helps. It helps a lot if it's kind of airtight. Then inside of this vessel here, I have this piece of cloth. You can also take a sponge or something. This will be soaked in the alcohol and it should be on top that it the droplets kind of rain down. And also what's I found out it's quite important is to have uh, an electric or a electromagnetic field surrounding the whole thing. Like this is what uh, this here is for. Um, I built a Villard cascade over here. This gives me um, like on here I connected the plus which is about one and a half thousand volts plus DC. And the bottom plate here I just connected to the minus of the Villard cascade. So we create an electric field around the whole vessel. This just really helps to clean up the mist, kind of. Like, uh, it's a big difference. I didn't have this in the beginning and it helped a lot. Like, the tracks are much more visible and also you can see them longer. It, it just helps a lot. Try to do something like this. Also, I want to show you some of the sources that I use. Um, the point is you can use the cloud chamber without any source at all. You don't have to put anything radioactive inside. Um, you will see cosmic radiation, cosmic rays that just hit the atmosphere anyway all the time a lot. And they will show up. You can see cosmic rays in the cloud chamber. You will have to be a little bit more patient though because it's just less action than for example if you put uranium ore or thorium or something that's like really radioactive um, and here I want to show you some of my samples this little rock here this is kind of my favorite this is a piece of uranium ore I think it's pitch blend I'll try to show you closer uh, yeah, that doesn't work so well but I, I'll show you in another video and this is a really good alpha source. There's a lot of alphas being picked off this, but there's also some betas and also gamma rays, which you can't see, but yeah, whatever. Um, also interesting experiment with uh, the uranium ore here is to wrap it in aluminium foil. Then you'll get Bremsstrahlung. 
it's basically the alphas are knocking off electrons in the aluminium foil and they will appear as betas. Uh, I have a video of that, you can watch that in one of my other videos. Also really neat stuff are these glass beads here. This is uranium glass. It contains about 2% of uranium oxide. It's kind of like for the coloring that you get this milky pretty color out of it somehow and um, interestingly uranium is mainly an alpha source. It also gives off some betas and some gammas but it, it's mainly alpha. But because the uranium is contained in the glass in these beads I also get a lot of bremsstrahlung. There's, there's a lot of betas getting kicked off of this and I guess it's just because the uranium is kind of trapped in the glass and on the way out the alpha particles also kick off electrons. And also this here is uh, interesting. This is a small piece of a uh, toriated welding rod. Basically it's this here. These are toriated welding rods. They contain 2% of thorium. And it's quite, this here is quite weak. It's really not that radioactive. But uh, it gives off alphas uh, quite uh, nicely. It's about time to get the thing fired up. Um, first of all, we'll put some alcohol. And also, I have like two magnets to strap in the cloth, which is really helpful. And just soak the cloth with a lot of alcohol. You really don't have to be greedy, take a lot. Then we strap the magnet in. Yep, looks good. Place the source, close the whole thing up, yeah that looks good. Also up here I put some 12 volt light bulbs just as a, like a small heating system for the top. Because it's good if the top of the vessel is about room temperature and the bottom will be pretty cold. So uh, let's start it up. The fan will be a bit annoying, it's a bit loud, but that's what you have to deal with. Then I'll start up the billiard cascade, give it the high voltage. Also, the LEDs are really important that you see something. And I'll start the Peltiers. So in about 5 minutes it should be working. I'll replace the camera in the meantime and I'll let you see how it looks. So finally it's running. I think you can see all the pretty alpha tracks kicking off of the uranium ore there. Well it took me a little bit longer than five minutes this time. The fine tuning can be a bit tricky, like that's really trial by error. Sometimes you get too much alcohol or too less or sometimes it helps to warm the glass a little bit like the top part. Yeah it's stuff like that but you just have to figure it out yourself I think if you build one of these. Well, a little, little bit of a historical context before I end this video. The first cloud chamber was invented by um, Charles Thompson Rees Wilson in 1911. And uh, it was like modified, like um, amped up a little bit by Alexander Langsdorff in 1936. And there's like two different kinds of uh, cloud chambers. There's the expansion cloud chamber, which is the original one or the diffusion cloud chamber, which is the one I built. Um, very interesting fact is that the positron actually was discovered with a cloud chamber. So we got our first proof of antimatter actually existing because of one of those. And in general, it's a great project. It's one of the coolest things I think I ever built and I really only can suggest everybody to try it. I think I'll end here. I hope you enjoyed and if you did maybe give me some likes or subscribe. I really would appreciate that and see you for the next video. Bye!